Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Check out this sweet, totally a Gibson miniature Les Paul I have right here. Let's see, Gibson 1, Gibson 2, Gibson 3, Gibson 4, Gibson 5, Gibson 6, Gibson 7, Gibson 8, Gibson 9, Gibson 10, Gibson 11, and Gibson 12. That's 12 times this thing says Gibson, so it must be a Gibson. No, this is the miniature Les Paul that got a lot of views, more views than I expected it to. But I have finally finished transforming this thing into a hot rotted miniature Epiphone Pee Wee. Alright, so first off the headstock. This is just a Gibson nameplate off of one of my amps I had laying around. The only thing left that said Epiphone on this thing was the actual headstock logo. Now I just have some mounting putty on that, I'll eventually take that off and put this back on my amp. But I thought it reminded me of like the 50s V's, just a giant Gibson logo, cause it totally looks correct, right? And since the truss ride cover naturally already had Gibson on it, I just thought, why not just completely make this thing ridiculously Gibson? This is the ultimate posers guitar. So for the tuners, I went for 1980s flip out winding tuners. These things were made by Schaller and have to be the absolutely coolest tuners that have ever been made. They have these little flip out winders on them and every single one comes out. I like to call these the Ninja Star tuners because it looks like you're going to throw them at someone. But these are little winders that are built in that makes it easier to tune up and tune down really quickly, which is great for when you don't have a string winder on you. These tuners are roughly worth about 250 bucks on their own due to their rarity. Now this was not an easy task in order to get these things in the guitar because I actually had to ream the headstock holes larger, which was not something I wanted to do, but I kind of had to in order to put any type of tuner in there. Because the cheap tuners that were in here were kind of like the Klusen style. They were just a single post and then it had kind of a cap that goes over the top to secure them. Whereas these are secured by a washer on the front. So that's a modification I can't take back. But I think it was cool. It was definitely worth giving this thing some excellent tuners. I did go ahead and purchase 13 gauge strings. I'll put a link in the description for those if you'd like to also try those on your own miniature Les Paul. And I've got to say, it definitely helped. This now is in standard tuning. Eh, for the most part. I haven't tuned it yet. <laughs> But the intonation thing isn't as bad. I mean, you can still bend it out of tune if you want to, but as far as playing normal chords with average pressure, it definitely made the guitar playable. So if you can only do one modification, definitely put 13s on one of these because that made this guitar infinitely better. So if you don't want to play your mini Les Paul in a G tuning, you can get 13 gauge strings and it does play just fine in normal tuning. Our next modification here, this is a 1972 Gibson Patent Sticker T-Top. This pickup's worth roughly 300 to 400 bucks on its own. 1972 was the only year that Gibson embossed their pickups like that. They stopped doing that because people would complain that this now makes this pickup specific to a neck pickup only. You can't take this off and put it on a bridge or else Gibson will be read upside down. And that was a huge problem for me when modifying this guitar because this thing only had enough lead length to put it in upside down. I had to splice a new lead on and then the ground wire was just too short so I had to splice a new one there. But I eventually got the pickup to work the way I wanted to. I had a vision and it was this way, not the other way. Now the wrap tail piece, unfortunately, I was unable to source another one to make this an intonatable thing. The intonation is garbage on the bottom two strings. I mean, listen to this. Now I did try purchasing a few, but they just didn't fit the given studs. And I've never modified studs or took them out or anything. So, so I didn't really want to modify the guitar like that, but I did buy one of those hip shot baby grand ones. I was very sad that didn't fit because those things are cool. 
And then I ordered one and the guy said he was from California. Turned out it was from China, so it didn't get here in any sort of time span. Oh, until after I decided to finally string this up with the 13s and then the next day it comes. So that one might have fit, but it's too late now. The knob I decided to put on here is a 70s or 80s knob. You can see it has a nice vintage flair to it. And I was trying to turn this into a miniature Les Paul Custom. Now the back I had a little bit of fun with. I did not initially intend to modify the neck plate or the back plate cover, but I just so happened to have the parts in my parts drawer to do this. This is a neck plate from a 1987 Gibson Q80 base that I had a long time ago. I had taken the neck plate off. I decided to keep it because I thought it was kind of like a cool name tag thing. And it's just been sitting around in my parts drawer waiting for the perfect project. Now the mounting holes did not line up correctly, but two of them did. So the original neck plate is still underneath this one. So really all this is doing is adding more weight to the guitar. These other two screws are still there. They're just not securing this outer neck plate. And the next one is a Gibson Custom Art Historic back plate. This is usually for a toggle switch cavity. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if this is a real Gibson thing. I don't know what model it came from. I had purchased a huge lot of parts on eBay from a going out of business sale. I believe it was the Scatterbrain guy. And this has just always been in there. I've never known what it was, but I was like, hey, this looks like it would complete the Gibsonification of this guitar. And now the inside pot. Once again, I had to get my Dremel out and route that pothole a little bit larger to get a full-sized pot since it had a miniature little pot in there. And I had it in my head, it has to be a Gibson branded pot because everything on this thing says Gibson. It's just beautiful. Now I am absolutely garbage at wiring, but I am amazed that my splicing and my wiring just happened to work well enough. But I did once again have to route the pothole out a little larger, and I had to do extra routing inside the channel cavity itself in order to get my splice job to work. And I had to enlarge the cavity in general just because it was so difficult to work in that tight space. And one final thing I did to make this an 80s part is I put the posi lock strap buttons on it. Now these buttons are not original 80s Gibson parts. I actually didn't know this, but Diodario makes their own version of that. And I think these are like six bucks brand new. They're kind of like a strap lock, but not as secure. They're just kind of a cool bygone of yesterday's Gibsons in my opinion. So now that we've got all that covered, Let's go ahead and hear how this sounds now with all of the upgrades in standard tuning.
Did it sound better? Oh yeah, it sounded a lot better, but that's because I changed all the electronics and put a very nice vintage Gibson pickup in here. So overall, I transformed this Epiphone Peewee into the first Gibson Peewee that the world has ever seen. It looks a little bit goofy, but what are my final thoughts? Is it worth upgrading one of these? No, it's not. I mean, let's add this all up again. You've got at least 250 on the tuners. You got about 300 on the pickup, so there's 550 there. The guitar itself usually costs anywhere from one to 150. So that's 700. Add the value of these back plates, you're looking at maybe another 100 bucks. And then if you add in the value of a proper wrap tail piece, getting it professionally set up with a new nut, I mean, in order to get this guitar to this stage, it's almost a thousand dollar guitar now, which is absolutely ridiculous. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed this little series on this miniature Les Paul. I will say this is not the last video I plan on doing with this guitar, but I'm done making time frame commitments because I've got to get busy. I have a lot of unreviewed guitars that I need to get to, but I do like to do a fun video every weekend, so maybe we'll see this one again in a few weeks. But what is there left to do with this guitar? Well, we've already upgraded it. Maybe we need to Frankenstein it now. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.